As we all know, the main body organ are the lungs placed inside our rib cage. For our purpose, the most important muscle in our body is the diaphragm, which is located just beneath the lungs. This is a muscle which is in a relaxed arch position. When we breathe in, the diaphragm muscle goes down and it causes the air to be sucked into the lungs. Simultaneously, as we breathe in, the ribs are drawn apart by the muscles between the ribs and the space inside the rib cage is increased. Let us do a little practice together. We exhale all the air out, and then we block our open mouth and nose with the hand so that we could take a little breath through the hand as we try to breathe in. Did you feel how the diaphragm operates? You should have felt it by its attachment to the breastbone. By normal exhaling, the diaphragm returns upward and the muscles of the rib cage return to their original position and the air is forced out of the lungs. Without this kind of exhaling, we wouldn't be able to play brass instruments because we need a steady and stable stream of air. This we must do to breathe in this fashion. So as the stomach fills with air and sinks downward, the interior muscles of the rib cage pull apart. While we are breathing outward, the muscles press against the rib cage and the abdominal muscles press the diaphragm upwards and return it to its original position. With the complete exhaling process, we get the diaphragm with assistance of the abdominal muscles to expand even higher than to their natural position. This way we get extra air which we can use by vibrating our lips when playing the brass instrument. We are breathing in through the mouth because it's the only way we can take in a maximum amount of air in a minimum amount of time. It is important to have the throat open and relaxed like when yawning. The jaw should be relaxed while playing. We should have in between the upper and the lower teeth a space to stick out the tip of our tongue. How much does one breathe in? There are two schools of thought. Some players breathe in a maximum amount of air, even if they play... Other players, like me, for example, take in only as much air as they need. Do you hear the difference? I don't. Both philosophies work. For breath development, it is essential to play long phrases, which necessitates a complete exhaling process. Here, I offer you three exercises. The first one is to concentrate on the low register. We hold the last tone as long as possible. Rest a bit and calmly breathe in. Okay. Hold the breath. Keep the tone alive, the note D you can play lower, for it is already in the plus 5 position.
Be careful not to inflate your cheeks too much. Keep the tone alive with full breath. Okay. Open it up again so that it really sounds. Whoops, I feel a little dizzy. Rest for a while. Rest. And we descend as low as possible. In the second exercise, we will master the breathing by crescendos and diminuendos. Okay, and try to do the crescendo more gradually. The crescendo is fine, but then you fall away too quickly on the decrescendo. The same. Again, so try the second one once more. Try to hold the tone steady, play the B-flat, and try to hold it again, steady. With this exercise, we practice simultaneously our tonguing, and we learn to play our scales and to move the slide quickly and accurately. When we master this, we can then practice it in different keys, for example, in F major, in B flat major, etc., etc. Thank <laughs> you. 
For good breath development, it is wise to do aerobic exercises like long distance running or swimming. Smoking is definitely not good and is a detriment. Circular breathing has three stages. We play the tone and during this time we inhale the cheeks and during the blowing out of our cheeks we breathe in through the nose. It looks like this. If we wish to learn circular breathing, we should start at the stage where the lungs are relatively full of air. We don't strive to take in too much air in one breath, but rather to take in more short breaths through the nose. It is like sniffing. Once more. The usual fault of beginners practicing circular breathing is that they strive to breathe at the moment they nearly have no air in their lungs. They can't, of course, succeed. The other fault is that they try to breathe in too much air, try only a little amount one after the other.